Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today's video will be more of like a design inspiration type video rather than a tutorial since I've already gone over a lot of these techniques before, but I was just so inspired by this new glitter color from PT Olive Glitters. It was in one of the most recent PT palettes and I just thought it paired so beautifully with white and gold. And so this was the design that I came up with and I wanted to share it with you guys. So I hope you enjoy this. Of course, you know we're gonna have all the products that you see listed and linked down below in the description box. That's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. start by base painting our cup with Sandro Pei from Rust-Oleum Two Times Ultra Cover. This is a paint and primer, so I just sprayed this directly onto my cup after prepping it. That paint took about 15 to 20 minutes to dry. I used a space heater to help speed up that process. And we're going to apply our glitter using epoxy method. I'm going to use a little bit more epoxy than usual because the glitter that we're using today is a chunky mix and having just a smidgen more of epoxy will really help that chunky glitter to lay flat. So we're just going to smooth this out over our cup, make sure we've smoothed out any kind of lines. And then we're just going to let it rip with ho ho Jehovah, Jehovah, I don't know how to say Jehovah. <laughs> this is a new um, PT Olive Glitter color. This was from the latest PT palette. It has not been added to the site yet, but I have some great alternatives listed in the description box that would work great for this design. And honestly, all you really want to pick as far as colors go is something that's going to contrast really well with bright white. So any kind of blues or maybe if you have some pretty like corals or pinks that would also look great with this design. And for this particular style cup, I am not going to glitter the bottom um, because it's not necessary. I am going to pat down all my chunky pieces with a little piece of that parchment paper. And then we're gonna set this on the rack to dry for about two to three hours. Once it's dry, I'm just going to tap off all the excess glitter as well as I can. And now we're ready to apply our first layer of epoxy. I've got a level here at the bottom of my cup to ensure that my cup is level. This is especially important with these kinds of cups because they have such a like narrow bottom. It's really easy for these to get off center and then end up being wobbly. So just be mindful of that. Also make sure that you're applying a very, very small amount of epoxy at the bottom of these particular cups, again, to avoid any kind of wobbliness later on. I'm going to let this layer of epoxy dry for four to six hours and then I will apply my second coat of epoxy right over that and that second coat is going to dry for about eight to twelve hours before we're ready for sanding. I want to pay close attention to the bottom of this cup. Again, this style of cup is really difficult to get smooth at the bottom. It just has a tendency to pull up epoxy down there and have issues later. So I want to make sure that it's definitely flat and not wobbly. If you find that your cup is wobbly, there is a really quick fix for that. All right, so we're just gonna grab a sheet of sandpaper. You could use any grit between 60 and 220, whatever you have around really, and you're just gonna lay it flat against the table and run the bottom of your cup against it as hard as you can. And this is going to take off a lot of epoxy from the bottom of your cup to get it to lay completely flat. I do this a lot anytime I have like a wobbly bottom and it works great. Just make sure you don't go down too far. So check every few passes to make sure you haven't removed too much epoxy. Of course, I'm gonna sand my top rim like I always do to expose a fine line of stainless steel. This is where we'll establish our seal after we put on our final coats of epoxy. It's so important with this particular design to make sure that your cup is completely smooth before we move on to the paint. And you're also going to want to put on another layer of epoxy after you sand before we do the painting part. The reason for this is that we're gonna be removing spray paint from the surface of our cup, kind of like we would with a geode paint. And if we have any sanded areas 
on our cup, some of that spray paint won't remove completely. It'll actually like get stuck in those sanded areas of the cup. So super important to have everything completely smooth, totally shiny <laughs> before we move on to the paint. So it's almost like you're going to want a almost finished cup about as smooth as you would want to have it for when you put on your decals. So here we go. I've got three coats of epoxy on my cup by now. It's totally smooth. It's been drying for well over 12 hours and I'm ready for paint. I'm going to put two coats of Rust-Oleum flat white spray paint on my cup. I want to make sure I have nice like solid white coverage over the whole cup. I'm going to let that white spray paint dry for about 15 to 20 minutes in front of my space heater to speed up the process. And then I'm going to paint it with some acrylic paint. I'm using Arteza's Premium Acrylic Paints in Titanium White. And then I'm going to use a chip brush to make brush strokes that span from the very bottom of my cup up to about the middle of my cup. The purpose of these brush strokes with the acrylic paint is that this acrylic paint will be harder to remove than the white spray paint. So when we go to remove the paint, what will be revealed is these white brush strokes. So we want to have kind of a dry brush technique where we'll see the texture of our brush strokes at the end of the strokes, if that makes sense. Also important to do this with a brush like the one that I'm using. So the chip brush is going to provide those like fringed ends of the brush strokes is what we're after. So you'll definitely want to get, you know, some of these chip brushes or, you know, any kind of like an old frayed brush that you might have laying around the house is great. Okay. And once we've got all of our brush strokes done, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to put on a second coat just to really ensure that I have the length of those brush strokes that I want and I have the density and thickness that I'm after as well. And here we are applying the second coat. And after I get this where I want it to be, like I've got enough brush strokes and they're to the height and everything that I want, I'm gonna let this sit and dry for about a half hour or so, depending on how warm your environment is. These paints may dry a little quicker. I did use a space heater to help speed along this process. And now we're ready for the paint removal part. So my paint is totally dry and I've got 91% rubbing alcohol in the bottle with a pink cap and I have Jasco acetone from the hardware store in the bottle with the blue cap. I'm using paper towels and I'm also going to use a rag later on. And I'm going to start with acetone first and so I'm going to get my paper towel soaked with some acetone here and I'm going to remove the biggest areas first. So we know we're gonna be removing the whole, like pretty much top half of paint here. So I'm just gonna go around with my paper towel and my acetone removing as much of the paint from that top section as I can. And then we'll go back over that with some rubbing alcohol to clean up any remaining paint. Once I've got those large sections of paint removed, I'm going to move into removing some of the paint around our brush strokes. So I'm gonna try and work in a up and down kind of motion like this because I wanna try and mimic what the texture of that edge will look like when we're done. When you find your paint getting like too muddled up, just like go back over it with a clean part of your paper towel and try to keep things up, cl as cleaned up as possible. When we start moving into these edges around our paint here where we're going to have our brush strokes, I'm going to use kind of a different technique to remove the paint. So I've got a rag here that I have, you know, some acetone on and I'm just going to drag that rag across where my brush strokes are trying to mimic how we want that texture to look for the final results. The easiest way that I found to do this was just to take like a clean part of my rag and drag it across those brush strokes in like a downward motion and it created a really cool texture and look. And then when I had to go to clean up the paint, I would just get a clean portion of my rag and use some rubbing alcohol to clean up the remaining paint. 
You're just gonna repeat that until you get the desired look all the way around your cup. And then again, go around with some of that 91% rubbing alcohol to clean up any of the remaining paint. You wanna make sure any like glitter sections of your cup are completely clean and free of you know, excess paint because we are not going to be able to remove it later once we epoxy over it. And there is nothing more frustrating than finding some of that excess paint clouding up your glitter at the end after you've already epoxied over it. So definitely take the time to make sure that you've got that all cleaned up and you don't have any excess paint. <laughs> all right, so moving on, um, we've got all of our paint removed and we've got that beautiful brush stroke texture going all the way around the center of our cup. I'm now ready to apply my gold leaf. To apply the gold leaf, we're gonna be using the Tacket glue, the Tacket over and over stuff. I'll put a link down below on where you can find it. This is just glue that kind of like stays tacky after it dries and it's really great for applying gold leaf. So I'm just gonna put a small amount on my paper plate here and using the same kind of chip brush that I use to apply the paint, I'm going to apply this glue in the same kind of brush stroke texture. So you wanna get just a little bit amount of that glue on your paint, on your paintbrush. You don't want it too thick. You don't wanna glob it on there. And you're just going to put random brush strokes through your paint. You can put this anywhere you want in whatever kind of pattern. I just sort of did a random line pattern. And you kind of want to extend those lines up beyond the paint to create some like, I don't know, interest and dimension, I suppose. And I would recommend working in small sections at a time just because you can't see the glue like after you put it on so it's hard to tell where you've already put glue and where you haven't so anyway I just did like a few lines at a time and then I'm going to just take a piece of this gold leaf I'll have a link on where you can find it I just got this one on Amazon and we're just gonna lay that gold leaf over the glue lines that we just created Usually I would use like gold leaf flakes. However, for this particular look, I wanted like a really smooth gold texture. I didn't want to have a lot of overlapping pieces and things like that. So I'm just going to take a whole sheet and place it right over where I did those glue lines. Once that sheet has had a little bit of time to adhere onto the glue, I'm going to brush off the excess gold leaf with a clean chip brush, okay? <laughs> the chip brushes that I linked down below in the description box comes with a whole box of these things, and they're great. So even if one gets all like gluey and clumpy, you can just throw it out um, because they're so cheap and you get so many in the box. So... Anyway, here I am just removing like the excess gold leaf, trying to salvage some of these larger pieces for further down on my cup. And then again, we're just gonna go back over this with our chip brush, brushing off the excess. And this is where it gets kind of messy. You're probably gonna want to vacuum when you're done with this, um, but no big deal. And the more I brush, the more I burnish that gold into a beautiful shiny texture. And then we're just going to repeat that same process all the way around the cup until we get a look that we like. And then I'm just going to let this dry for about a half hour before I move on to my next step. My next step will be just applying the decal. I've already cut and layered my decal. I'm putting a beautiful monogram on this. This is a monogram from one of my patrons in our Flynn Sisters exclusives group. Thank you so much for letting me use your monogram for this tutorial. Uh, if you guys need help with creating layered monograms, I have a tutorial down below where I walk you through how to do this. It's super easy and such a beautiful look for this design. I'm gonna apply my decal like I normally do, always measure twice, cut once. And then once we've got our decal on there, I'm just gonna go straight into epoxy. There's no need to seal this. Everything is adhered really well. 
those uh, gold flakes aren't really going to go anywhere once they're on that tacket glue. There's something about it that just really adheres that gold leaf super well. As long as you've really taken the time to brush off all the excess, you shouldn't get any moving around once you put the epoxy over it. So I'm just putting on my final coat of epoxy. This particular cup took two final coats before it was totally smooth. And that was it. We were done. So I absolutely love how this came out. It turned out exactly like I had envisioned it in my mind and I'm thrilled with the results. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you liked our video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a new video. I do upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.